welcome in the lecture series of automation and robotics today we are going to discuss about the robotics so what is robotics let us first understand this term see robotics is an interdisciplinary research area at the interface of computer science and engineering so robotics involves design construction operation and use of robots the goal of robotics is basically to design intelligent machine that can help and assist humans in their day to day life and keeps everyone safe so the main function of the robot or the object of the robot is uh, to do the tedious or repetitive tasks which are doing by the labor or human person and also to provide the safety of the user so therefore because sometimes what happening there are uh, so many uh, places where the human cannot work for example the hazardous spaces high temperature or you can say the environmental conditions are not suited so in that case we can use the robot in place of the human and uh, it can work like a human like uh, uh, behavior so that uh, we can achieve the same task which can do by the human and uh, sometimes what happening the robots are more efficient as compared to the humans so if we talk about the robot that what is robot robot is formed with the words of the robot it means work and robota a greek word or slave word which is used here it is a robota and the meaning of manual or slave labor so uh, it was uh, basically um, you can say that uh, introduced and got a publicity from uh, from the play uh, in the year of 1921 rossum universal robot so uh, after that there was so much uh, work was going on and uh, research was also going on depending upon the requirement uh, maybe it may be a uh, uh, industrial requirement or you can say that uh, the uh, other places requirement where the you can say that robot can work or you can say that home requirement where the robots are doing the similar kind of work where the persons are doing in their cases so uh, if we talk about uh, 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 about the uh, definition part of the robot we can say it's a reprogrammable machine which is a multifunctional manipulator uh, designed to move materials parts tools or specialized devices through variable program motion for the performance of variety of tasks so since uh, basically a uh, robot is reprogramming well, means if suppose a robot is working and uh, is it is doing it's a uh, number of program number of uh, tasks so when the one task is completed uh, the robot will work for the another task and if there are different types of tasks which are not uniform or not similar kind of things so what happening it the programming can be uh, done accordingly and can work the robot in that environment so multifunctional manipulators which are designed to move materials parts tools and specialized devices through various program motions for the performance of variety of tasks now as i told you that robot function is basically to generate a specific motion of joints and integrate tooling and sensors see what happening basically uh, the robots are used for the general purpose and programming machine pro processing and uh, you can say that this technology is uh, quite similar to a numerical control as it has followed the same development path and its history which is related to it and uh, basically this is also uh, to perform and to communicate and interact with the other machines and make simple decisions so therefore a robot should uh, designed and its function should be constant for the specific motion of the joints right so where we can say that uh, it is a manipulator where the manipulator means it is a type of a linkages where the two links are joined with the help of some connectors 
okay or uh, to perform its motion in the space the next is the integrate tooling and sensors so because uh, we can use the robots to, with the tools uh, to uh, basically perform the task because we have to use a end factor here and this end factor is replaceable with the other uh, type of tools so therefore basically the main function is to integrate the tooling and sensors in this case so if we talking about the robot processes it is mainly with the path following so uh, because whatever path is uh, designed or selected the robot should follow the path and uh, accordingly uh, we can say that it is a, it is having a repetitive configuration moves because in the industry robot has to perform the uh, you can say that uh, uh, repetitive motions and uh, it should like a for example in the case of material transfer where pick and place and machine loading spray painting and assembly so where the repetitive operation should be performed with the help of the robot manipulators or robot next is the tele robotics tele robotics is basically where the person is sitting at one place and it is controlling the robot at the other place right so it the distance may be uh, you can say any far we, we can say that suppose in the case of uh, medical uh, applications where the person is sitting in one city and doing the operation on the other in the other city so where what happening in that case he can control the movement of the end effector or the tool or you can say the surgery equipments at the remote distance at the remote place so this is basically used the tele robotics so the, there is a vast application of the tele robotics next is the target moves versus uh, you can say that it is a uh, thought moves so thought moves is basically different from the target moves in the case of thought moves means we have to provide a learning type of capability for the uh, robot where the data is stored in the memory and therefore it can work according to the uh, stored data where is the target move where we have to set the targets and apply the uh, inverse kinematics to the manipulator and then perform with the help of the control uh, devices or controller so this is basically uh, mainly the processes of the robots now this is the first uh, industrial robot it was uh, developed by general motor plant in the year of 1961 and also patented by us us patent so you can see here a picture uh, where you can see that it's a heavy constructions and uh, uh, you can say that it has a manipulators and uh, where the linkages can move and uh, perform its task so it was a first industrial robot now if we talk about the parts of a robot or the anatomy of the robot see the first is the manipulator manipulator of an industrial robot consists of a series of joints and links so there are different joints and links which comprises the study of anatomy as well as the other aspect of the manipulator physical construction so robotic joints provides a relative motion between two links of the robot so each joint or axis provide a certain degree of freedom of motion so in most case, cases only one degree of freedom is associated with each joint so a robot complexity can be defined or classified according to the total number of degree of freedom they possesses for example if any manipulator have uh, say six joint so if each joint having a single degree of freedom the total degree of freedom in the robot will be six so next is the pedestal pedestal is basically pedestal or you can say that it's a base where the robot is fixed it means it is the um, bottom most part of the robot where it is uh, fixed either on the surface or on the ceiling so therefore uh, what happening we can fix this end and the other end is uh, free to move in the space so uh, next is uh, the part which is called as a controller controller will basically to provide the control uh, signals it is just like a cnc machine where we control the uh, coordinates in the space so basically 
uh, in the case of cnc machines where we use a g code and m codes to control the coordinates in the space of the tools similarly with the help in in the case of uh, robots we have to control the motion of each axis and find out the end effector position in this space so this end effector positions can be find out with respect to the base next is the end effector as i told you the extreme position just like your human hand your hand is your end effector right so it is like a human uh, being uh, set up where we can find out a gripping uh, forces say for example in your hand when if you want to pick the object and place at different place right so what happening similar kind of job can be done with the help of end effector it can uh, use to grip the object uh, you can see in this picture that uh, this object is uh, 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 gripped with the help of end effector and it is used to pick and place or sometimes we can use end effector as a welding torch or end effector may be a painting gun and uh, it can use to uh, do the things in the space next is the power source of course any machine will not run until the power is there so therefore um, we can say that the power source is used to uh, provide the motion of the joints okay now if we talk about the manipulator manipulator as i told you it has a base and the second is uh, the shoulder and arm and gripper so basically in this case we can say that the base is fixed and the other things are movable okay uh, if we talk about the robot anatomy robot anatomy you can see here in this picture where the manipulator as i told you it consists of uh, joints and links so uh, we can say that uh, uh, if we talk about each joints is connected of two links and one is input link and uh, uh, and the other is output link so with the joint providing controlling uh, movement or relative movement between the input link and the output link the robotic link is a rigid component of the robot manipulator so for example if we talk about a four bar mechanism or five bar mechanism a mechanism is basically uh, having a relative movement between the linkages and the linkages should be rigid link and uh, so that there must not be any type of flexibility so we can achieve a accurate movement of the linkages or any joint in the space similar thing can be performed with the help of this mechanism or you can say it's a mechanism where the manipulator having a rigid components and form a relative movement between the linkages so most robots are basically mounted upon the stationary base suppose this is a base which is stationary such as which is mounted on a floor from this basis a joint link numbering scheme can be recognized like a for example the robotic base and its connection to the first joint is turned as link 0 and the first joint in the sequence is the joint 1 right then therefore the input link is joint 1 where the output link from the joint 1 is the link 1 which leads to the joint 2 right and it will followed like that that link 2 is connected with the link 3 so therefore you can find out the relative position of joint 3 with respect to joint 2 and so on so you can say that you can find out the end position of the end effector can be find out with respect to joint 3 joint 2 or joint 1 or link 0 which is associated with the its base so we can say that it's a kinematic motion and this can be performed and you can analyze this motion which we will discuss later on in the next series uh, where the kinematic motion will be considered and uh, we will find out that how to go for the kinematic motion it means the forward kinematics and inverse kinematics of the motion so as i told you that joint provides a relative motion joint provide a relative motion relative motion means the one joint is moving with respect to the another joint 
So you can find out the relative position of the second joint. If suppose if we consider the joint one and joint two, you can find out the output link joint two with respect to the joint link one. So therefore, this can be a relative motion, and this is a relative motion where you can find out the position of any joint or any link with respect to its previous link. So each joint provides a degree of freedom because, as we know that joints are connected with the help of some connectors. So therefore, these joints may be you can say prismatic joint or revolute joint. So since we have to discuss here the degree of freedom, degree of freedom means the possible of movement of the body in a space, right? So therefore, we can find out in this case that this base is fixed here. This uh, first link, with respect to link zero, can rotate about 360 degree about its vertical axis, right? And uh, similarly for joint two, where uh, this joint can rotate, uh, this link two can rotate about joint one, okay, like this. So robot manipulator consists of uh, two section. Basically, it's a body and arm. For positioning of objects in the robot work volume and the wrist assembly for the orientation of objects. So first, what happening? There are two motions. One is the positioning of an objects. So these linkages will play here uh, a role to position the objects in the robot work volume. It means uh, whatever uh, we will discuss. What is the work volume uh, in later? Uh, sections, but right. Uh, let us understand that this is called as the main body of the robot. This all links will combine together and form a main body of the or arm of the robot. So this is basically used for the positioning of the robot in the space. Whereas the end effector or the wrist assembly is used to orient the object. Okay, uh, so uh, as we know that uh, if we understand the joint link numbering scheme, and uh, after that we should understand there are some manipulator joints or mechanical joints for robots. The first, uh, there are as I told you that there are two types of uh, motion. One is the translation motion, and the second is the rotational motion. So translation motion may be two types. One is the linear joint. Or it is is uh, abbreviated as a type L, and the second is the orthogonal joint. It is called as type O. So in the case of uh, linear joint, it is a type L joint where the there is a relative motion movement between the input link and the output link is a translational sliding motion where the axes of the two links are parallel. So in the first case, you can observe the here that if this is the output link. And this is the input link. This output link will have a translatory motion, and uh, the axes of these two links are parallel to each other. Next is the O type of uh, you can say that uh, joints or orthogonal joint. In this case, what happening? There is a relative movement between the input link and the output link is translational sliding motion, but the output link is perpendicular to the input link. So you can observe here that this output link can slide on this uh, input link, right? So that, but this output link will be perpendicular to the input link. Then the secondary type of category comes here that it is a rotary motion where uh, uh, we have to perform the rotary uh, motion of the linkages, output link and input link. So this is a type R, means the first is called as the rotational joint. So this output link can rotate with respect to input link in clockwise direction and in uh, anti-clockwise direction, and the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the axis of input and output link. So we can find out the axis of rotation which is perpendicular to this. Uh, you can say the board where you can find out this output link can rotate about this axis. Next is the twisting joint. It means in this case it is called as a T type joint, type T joint, and this provides uh, rotary motion, but the axis of rotation is parallel to the axis of the two links. So here, what happening? If you consider the input link and the output link, the rotation 
of the output link or you can say in the form of twisting this is uh, you can say about the axis with uh, the axis in this case is parallel to the input and output link then the last type of the rotary motion is the revolving joint or it is called as a type v joint you can see here in this picture that uh, the axis of the input link is parallel to the axis of rotation so you can see here that this axis is parallel to the axis of rotation of the joint and the axis of the output link is perpendicular to the axis of rotation so you can see here that this uh, only changes here that the output link is perpendicular to the input link and this output link will rotate about this axis either in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction and this axis is parallel to the input link so this is basically the category of the manipulator joints or the mechanical uh, joints for robots now uh, here we have to see the different types of robots or classification of robots the robots can be classified by either uh, geometrical classifications or its uh, constructional uh, you can say that classification and the second is the controlling so the first configuration comes here into picture is uh, scara where you can find out this is basically a robot you can see here this picture where the as i told you depending upon the previous uh, article which we have discussed that different types of movement you can understand here that the scara is basically it's a uh, articulated uh, arm robot uh, and uh, compliant in the x y axis and the rigid in z axis so scara configuration is a unique and designed to handle a variety of metal handling operation so this is basically the end effector and this end is fixed here or you can say it's a base so you can see that uh, this is basically uh, rotated about this axis vertical axis and about this axis right so each joints will have only the rotational joints therefore you can say that the first rotation is here the second rotation is here and the third rotation itself at a spindle of the end effector so therefore we can say that it has a 3r uh, configuration or three rotational configuration next is uh, it's a cartesian coordinate robots cartesian coordinate robots is an industrial robot whose three principal axes of controls are linear and are at right angle to each other you can see here in this picture where this is the first link the second link is this one and the third link is this one so each link will have a linear motion and the axis principal axis if we talk about all principal axis are right angle to each other so where if you consider this one is a this one axis this is a second axis and these two axis are perpendicular to each other and this is a vertical it means this is a perpendicular to this axis and also this axis so you can find out that uh, these two links are basically same links right and supporting this uh, uh, you can say a beam type of uh, element of the robot and this will slide on this uh, uh, member and this will uh, move uh, vertically up and down or can slide like this so in this case what happening the three sliding joints correspond to moving the wrist up and down okay this one in out back and forth and among all these other advantages the mechanical arrangement simplifies the robot control arm solutions so it has a high reliability and precision when operating in a three dimensional spaces see what happening in this case because uh, the controlling of such type of uh, configuration is quite easy because all joints is having a similar kind of uh, movement or you can say you can say that uh, every joint is a prismatic joint here so that's why it is a three prismatic joint so 3p so cartesian 3p joints next uh, is a cylindrical type of uh, configuration 
cylindrical configuration is basically it consists of a vertical column this one and relative to which an arm assembly which is moving up or down you can see here that it is uh, uh, this uh, assembly will move up and down about this column the arm can move in and out relative to the axis of the column so you can see here this is the arm which can move up and down and this can expand and this uh, arm can rotate about the 360 degree so you can see there here that that every joints or you can say uh, it has a rotary joint at the base and the prismatic joint to connect it the link so because as i told you that its base will have only a rotation so therefore it has a single r and two prismatic joints so two p is here it means one is the vertical up and down and second is the arm can expand in this direction so if you rotate this entire configuration you will find out this type of work space right and uh, you will find out that it will draw the trajectory in the space in this way so you can say that the maximum reach can be find out and it's a quite simple so therefore the robots have a cylindrical shaped work envelope this is called as a work envelope or right and the whatever volume you have to calculate is called as work volume so which is achieved with the rotating shaft and an expandable arm that moves in a vertical and sliding motion so cylindrical robots are often used in tight work spaces for simple assembly machine tending or coating applications due to their compact design next is uh, is called as a articulated robot see articulated robot is uh, just like a human arm so articulated robot is uh, basically uh, it's uh, basically the arm is uh, you can say that uh, is mounted to the base here and uh, with the twisting joint so therefore this joint is one joint is called as the twisting joint because this entire body can twist about this base so the arm itself can be feature anywhere from the two rotary joints up to 10 rotary joints which act as axes with each additional joint or axis allowing for the greater degree of motion see what happening in in this case the first uh, joint is you can say that it's a twisting joint the second joint is this one where this link can rotate about this link so therefore this is a rotary joint and this is a third joint it means this is again a rotary joint and the fourth is again this is a twisting joint here so you can say that these are the basically axes which needs to be controlled so you can find out here the number of degree of freedom because as i told you that each joint must have at least one degree of freedom mostly therefore you can say that in that case this is a single de one degree second degree third degree and four degree so it has a four degrees uh joints and it can rot uh, have uh, may, maybe 10 uh, rotary joints so therefore if you require the more uh, flexibility in the robot or degree of motion you have to increase the additional joints so most articulated robot uses four to six axes maximum so typical applications for articulated robots are assembly arc welding and uh, packaging or you can say material handling pick and place also so this type of robot is uh, because it has a more flexibility if you are using six axis robot so it can move in the space anywhere and uh, due to its greater flexibility uh, it can be uh, easily do its uh, typical tasks next is the polar robot you can see here that in that case uh as i shown you the first historical uh, robot uh in the previous picture and uh, where it was you work on the polar uh, configuration or a spherical type of robots having an arm with two rotary joints and one linear joints connected to the base with a twisting joints so what happening here we can see that uh, this is a one twisting joint second twisting joint and this is a translatory joint or you can say linear joints right so it has a two 
rotary joints one linear joint connected to base with a twisting joint and the, this entire body will fix up with its base and this whole arm can twist about its base so the axis of the robot work together to form a polar coordinates which allows the robot to have a spherical work envelope you can see here that if you draw the uh, work envelope with the help of this kind of configuration of the robot you will find out this uh, shape will be a spherical shape so polar robots are created as a one of the first type of industrial robot to ever be developed the polar robots are commonly used for die casting injection molding welding and material handling so basically we have to control the axis or you can say the coordinates in the uh, polar uh, envelope or shape is uh, this is basically having a flexibility uh, for the performance of such kind of applications next is the delta type of robot delta robot or parallel robot uh, possesses three arms connected to a single base so you can see that this is a a uh, ceiling type of robot where this is the frame or you can see here that there is a single base is having a three different uh, linkages or three arms which are connected to a single base and uh, these three links are uh, joined with the end effector so delta robot works in a dome shaped and can move both delicately and precisely at uh, high speed due to each joint of the end effector being directly controlled by the three arms so what happening because the controller has to control the axis or the movement of the joint at three different places so you can find out it may have a typical type of configurations or you can say that it can take uh, any shape in the movement so therefore this is very useful for the fast pick and place uh, application in the food and pharmaceutical and electronic industries where Uh, the components can be uh, pick and place at different places or the assembly is can be done right so end effector can be used uh, a magnetic gripper or magnetic uh, gripper can be used to um, or a suction cup can be used here uh, very easily in that case where uh, it can pick and place the object at anywhere in the space right so this is basically a uh, uh, you can say one of the interesting type of robot where uh, Uh, the, uh, the they can achieve a very fast operations the working speed of this robot is very high as compared to the previous one so delta robot is uh, basically mostly used in the case of uh, fast picking and place applications thank you very much